Titus 2, verses 9 to 11. Teach slaves to be the subject to their masters in everything, to try to please them, not to talk back to them, not to steal from them, but to show that they could be fully trusted so that in every way they will make the teaching about God our Saviour attractive. And the word attractive, appealing, beautiful, lovely, endearing. Now, the New Testament never lays down laws. In fact, Jesus said, don't think of the commandments and precepts of the Old Testament. It's just love God, love your neighbour, that's enough. And so the New Testament never lays down a law because that would just produce a legalism. It offers grace. It offers principles. Because if you have a, a precept, that creates a legalism. You know, imagine if you sort of said, uh, you must pay your TV licence. And so you said, well, hmm, okay, but do I have to pay my TV licence for my 17-year-old son? Or wait a minute, we've got three TVs. Do we need three television licences? Or wait a minute, we've got 50 people in this house, one TV license. You know what I mean? We start to, uh, legalism creates loopholes and it just becomes a, a game. So the New Testament doesn't offer us a precept. It says, be honest. <laughs> it's different. A principle sets you free to figure things out for yourself. A precept creates Pharisees. And if it was precepts, it would be bound to one culture. You know, imagine if the New Testament said, computer games are demonic. Okay. Well, what's going to happen in 50 years' time when we all do it by telepathy? You know what I mean? Okay, precepts, no. Principles, yes. So, listen carefully. The New Testament doesn't say that slavery is wrong. But it creates the opportunity for slavery to disappear. It says all people are equal. It says in Christ there's neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. It says that in Christ slavery doesn't exist. Right? But it doesn't say slavery is wrong. It says, here's the principle, now you go and figure out how it works out in practice. He treats us like adults, does, does Jesus. So this passage here, Teach slaves to be the subject to their masters and everything. It's not condoning slavery. In fact, the principle behind this passage is, is so big, so revolutionary, that it makes slavery seem minuscule, a little bit ridiculous, pathetic. You see, it's creating an opportunity for a different kind of response. Uh, because many slaves and slave owners were turning to Christ in the first century. And so that's, we know that's a fact. Paul's, Paul even addresses uh, the, the situation in Philemon and, and, and other places many, many times about slavery. But he never says, it's a social injustice that must be crushed quick to the ballot box. Right? You don't change social, a socially unjust situation by legislation. You change it from the heart first. So this passage doesn't condone slavery, it accepts a contemporary condition, and then it suggests a principle of response. Okay, so how your task is not to make yourself free of slavery, is to present Christ in a way that's attractive through the way that you're a slave. It's astonishing, isn't it? Breathtaking, unbelievable. Of course social justice is, is vital, but if you're not careful, if you abolish slavery, then um, what you might do is get rid of one set of bullies, you know, the slave owners, and replace them with a new set of bullies, the newly freed slaves. Yeah, justice, down with the tyrants. And they become, in their turn, their own tyrants. So here's what they say here. He says, what is your job in life? What do I do? I have to aim to make the gospel of God my Saviour, attractive and appealing to other people. He says, okay, so what do you do? He says, okay, everything I do, I do it heartily as unto the Lord. I work in obedience and submission. Now, there's some really popular phrases for today's society, aren't there? Ephesians 6 says, don't, don't work for someone with eye service as men please us, but do it from the heart. And Colossians 2 says, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. The Lord is who you serve. And here it says, aim to give it satisfaction. So it's, you know what they're saying. They're saying, 
Don't take 15 minute toilet breaks. Don't nick boxes of staples. Don't use the company phone at dinner time when no one's watching. Don't steal their time, don't steal their products. Work and aim to give satisfaction. Do something that's going to make the company more of a success because you're in it. Bless them. Be moral and upright in every way. And stop pilfering. For goodness sake, can you imagine the sad irony of people who are offering... Uh, giving out tracks and witnessing and ripping off their company at the same time. I'm not saying it's you, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, work to make my boss's company a success. Care about it. Don't answer back. Don't be sullen. Don't drag your feet or sulk when you're given a task to do. Don't begrudge your time. In this passage, show yourself trustworthy in all that you do, whether you're a T-boy or a vice president. Imagine the impact on productivity. But also imagine the impact on employer-employee relations if you were just a great employee. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? Slavery dissolved because of the impact of Christianity in the Roman Empire. Is that incredible? It took time, but the principle became a seed. The seed became a whole social chain. Think of people in the Old Testament like Joseph and Daniel who were successful, successful businessmen in their contemporary society, but honoured God first. Paul says this in Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. You know what you do with your, your body? Okay, this is your reasonable service. Don't be conformed to the way the world does things, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen? Your assignment is servanthood. You are a slave. Your assignment is servanthood. But that's not your identity. Your identity is royal. You are made in the image of God. So you're not servile, cringing and creeping, but you are a servant to all. Aim to give satisfaction to God, who is your ultimate boss. God bless you. Amen.